And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Potato Pirates, a card game of p potato war. Roast, mash, and fry your opponents in this coding card game. See you later, cat. See, here's the deal. In this game, you are potato pirates. Well, I guess that's right there going to determine if you like the game or not, right? Because some people will be like, yay, I'm a potato pirate. And other people are going to go, what? But the coding thing is there, right? So there's a lot of games nowadays that are teaching kids about programming and if-then loops or if-else or what have you. Yeah, because that's a big thing. It's a big part of our society. It's something a lot of our kids are going to be going into as a job thing. And so teaching them that as a kid is not a bad idea. And another uh, game from the same company, Robot Turtles, is one I really promote for that reason. So I'm excited to see another one. Let's see how it plays. In Potato Pirates, each player is going to start with two ships. They're going to start uh, at port. So here we have the clipper chip and the fried frigate. You can get things like the fried flying fingerling, the iron tato, and the baked barnacle. Anyway, you also have ten pirates on each ship. This is a five, and those are ones. The rest of the pirates wah, are placed into a bag here. You're also going to have a deck of cards. Each player is going to draw five cards from this deck. Now what you're trying to do over the course of this game is to basically take out everybody else or get potato kings. If you ever draw a potato king over the course of this game, you need to show everyone else that you're a potato king. You reveal it to everyone in the group and then you say all oh, hail and everyone has to salute you and shout potato king. The last person to do that has to pay you two potatoes. So you, one of the ways to win the game is to get all the potato kings. There's a lot of other cards in the deck, so on your turn, you're going to draw two cards, and then you're going to program ships. Now, when you program ships, you're going to be placing cards on those ships. A lot of times, those are cards that will attack someone else, like fry three potatoes, or roast one potato, or mash two potatoes. So, you could put that on a ship here like this, maybe that, but I might want to put some modifiers on these, so maybe I'm going to do this one for X times. So I'm going to roast one potato for X times, and X is the number of cards in the enemy's turn, hand. Or maybe this one, just for two times. Or maybe this one, it's going to attack every ship. If uh, there's less or equal to five potatoes, and I'll attack ships with five or fewer potatoes, else I attack ships with six or more potatoes. Um, so there's some of these if else cards on there. Sometimes it will continue to do something. So while the, they have more than six potatoes, it will hit them. So for example, I put th fry three potatoes while more than six. If I attack someone with the ship, I'm going to destroy three of their potatoes. Do they still have more than six? Then I hit them for three more. Do they still have more than six? And I keep going. So you can program ships. On your turn though, you can basically activate a ship use the cards to attack someone else's ship, then the cards go away. And then you will deactivate your ship and you can load it up again on a future turn. So you're going to be loading up a ship or you're going to be attacking with the ship. So you'll be using these action cards to attack, then using control cards with loops and conditionals for whiles to attack. But there's also interrupt cards in here. There's recruit cards, getting two more potatoes from the potato sack, adding them to your crew. There's switching where you might get ships based on how many ships you own at any given point in time. There's hijack where you can steal an enemy ship and the cards on it and their potatoes are forced to go to another ship. There's loot where you can steal cards from someone else's hand. And so you're going to be playing all these cards meanwhile trying to find these potato kings. So the game will end when someone gets all the potato kings, in which case they win or if you take out all the other players and if all your ships are gone you're removed from play and eventually one person's left and that person will win that way also. Now this game is basing itself on its components because hey look look at all these potatoes they're cute they're soft and squishy and they come in a burlap sack which looks like a potato bag. 
The cards themselves are also funny, like, hey, look, this potato's getting roasted. It's kind of cruel, actually. Fried, that's even worse. Um, mashed is not too good either. But the, the cute potato artwork, people are going to like that. The card quality is okay. The ships are also good, although I wish they maybe had used a little bit of different artwork on them. They're just put different names on the ships. But the components are fine, and everything fits easily. They have a little tuck box to put all the cards inside in the game, and a fairly in-depth instruction manual, which talks about the concept in programming that these cards come from, and loops and stuff, so that you can teach kids a little bit about programming while they're playing the game. Ooh, here's the problem with this game. I'm all for teaching if-then loops, um, or if-else loops, I guess. And I like the idea of coding, but the problem with Potato Pirates is at the end of the day, it just comes down to a blow other people up game. And you can sit there and go, oh, I'm gonna program the ship, oh, this is pretty cool, I'll attack you, it kills two of your potatoes, and then if, you, if I do this, it will, it will keep activating, that's cool, and then someone just steals your ship and your cards. So all that set up just for someone to steal your ship. There's a couple problems I have with it. One of them is, it's hard to get more potatoes, really easy to lose them. You can be out of this game in five minutes, if the other player is so determined. You're just blowing up pirates left and right with these cards. And then there's other cards where you steal ships and do different things to stop them. And there's not many cards that give you more pirates back. In fact, the game comes with an inordinate number of potatoes that I don't think will ever be used. Um, so that's problematic to me. I like the idea of the if-then, and it's like, ooh, make a cool combo. But most of the combos are like, hit someone for three pirates times two. All right, so you hit them for six. That's interesting, kind of, except they only had six pirates on their ship. Done, sunk. Next. And I like, I would love to have seen this concept put into a better game. I already mentioned Robot Turtles from the same company, which taught, you know, how to program a robot to go these different ways, and you're moving around the board collecting things. That was a good idea, and the game was like a racing-style game and figuring out how to get places. It was a good game. Here we have some interesting concepts, and I do appreciate that the book here will show us these concepts, like, okay, here's what a variable is, here's what a condition is, here's what a nested loop is, great. But my kids aren't gonna wanna learn about a nested loop when I just blew their ship up and sunk it before they even had a chance to see the nested loop occur. And that's where I feel the disconnect is. I feel like people who wanna play games, they call them take that games where you're just hitting the other person with bad cards and playing good cards in yourself. Those games are a dime a dozen. This one's different than those games because it has these cool actual computer programming concepts tucked in it. But then the game itself isn't good enough to justify that. So the whole thing is mad to me. So I'm not going to recommend it, unfortunately. I like the idea better than the actual game. Dice Tower Judgment, cute, but not something I want to play.